gosh, this is kind of sad stuff. God, I hate to find this is all I found. But um, <laughs> also another person we lost um, on this on in 14th of December was um, I forgot, I'm sorry, I forgot the year Herbert Solo. Oh, and I don't, you probably don't know that name, Veronica, but I know Charles knows that name. Herbert mm -hmm. Solo was executive producer on the original series. Yeah. Okay. And that may not sound like a big deal, but he was so much more important than that. Um, everybody knows the story that Gene Roddenberry with the first pilot of Star Trek didn't hit and that the show was not going to be picked up. But in something that's even to this day rare, they did a second pilot. And the story kind of goes that Gene Roddenberry really is the one who sold it. But the truth of the matter is that Gene Roddenberry was not the most eloquent speaker sometimes. He was, he was a big <laughs> guy and a talkative guy, but he was kind of shy and he was actually kind of awkward sometimes. So when he first pitched Star Trek to Desilu Studios, which had most of its properties on CBS, they rejected the, pro the property because it, he called it Wagon Train to the Stars. And they're like, what are you talking about? This makes no sense. <laughs> and it was actually Herbert Solo who was brought in later who, when Roddenberry was granted a second pitch effort, this time at NBC, it was Solo who worked with Roddenberry and coached him. And one of the things he said was, Gene, shut up talking unless they ask you a direct question. And for God's sake, drop Wagon Train to the stars because that makes no <laughs> sense. <laughs> and he coached Roddenberry on how to present Star Trek. And that's why Star Trek got picked up. So Later, he's the savior of Star Trek. Yeah. There's so many people behind the scenes of Star Trek. And it's like any show. You know, it's kind of like George Lucas created Star Wars, but the best movie, in my opinion, Empire Strikes Back, was not written by George Lucas. That kind mm -hmm. of thing. And Solo and Justin and others were much more instrumental in a lot of ways, basically helping Gene. The other thing that happened is that at the time, Desley Studios was doing other shows, such as Mission Impossible. And after the first few episodes... The, net, the Desilu executives like, man, this show costs too much. Star Trek, so they were gonna they were gonna dump one of the shows. Like something's got to go. And it was Solo who went and had a meeting with the executives at Desilu, who said, "We've got to save Star Trek." And all the executives were like, "This show makes no sense. We're gonna dump it." Lucille Ball happened to be in the room that day, and all she did was nod her head at Solo, and that saved Star Trek. Mm. Mm. And yeah. And then this guy went on to become executive producer. So he did so much stuff behind the scenes. Um, like so many people, Roddenberry had the vision, but it takes so many more people to make it work. Mm -hmm. And Solo is literally one of the, I'd say really one of the two or three most important people in Trek history. Although almost nobody knows his name nowadays. Yeah, but to original series fans, his name was very memorable. Yes. And, and a lot of the reason is because on the end credits, his credit was over the picture of Baylock. And you're always yes. waiting for that picture of the Baylock puppet to come up. And it would say executive yeah. in charge of production, Herbert F. Solo, which right. uh, I think they did deliberately. I think that was an end joke <laughs> to the production guys. 